three. Uh, Exodus. Exodus. Exodus 33. We'll get done the whole uh, rest of Exodus 33. We did the first part up to verse number uh, 16. Where Moses made the request. Now remember, uh, the people had just uh, sinned. The people had just uh, made that golden calf. And uh, he, they broke, busted it up and they, they made it into a powder. And then made the people to drink it. In, in liquid, uh, you have to realize you got a million, two, three million people. Uh, one little calf, they're not getting so much as you think. You got to be realistic with it, like zinc or niacin or anything like that. It starts to make sense when you do it that way. Stop watching movies. Movies are not the truth. Movies are Hollywood. Okay, uh, but anyway, uh, then the Lord has to. He's, he says in the last, in 32, the last verse of 35, he said, which Aaron, that calf, which the people made, which Aaron made, Aaron uh, made, okay? And uh, not only Aaron, but the people. Remember, the people were peer pressure on Aaron. And then uh, the Lord had said, he said, uh, he's good, said, I will send my angel uh, before you. And uh, you're not, sometimes you've got to understand something, uh, you can't have a perfect fellowship with the Lord, but that's what you got, He wants. You know, your fellowship can be hurt. Hey, look, they had a bad heart, and the Lord's like, I'm not going to go among you. Yeah. Right. There are times. There are times. Hey, look, uh, you could be in church every week. Uh, you, could be, um, you could be singing every week in church, but let me tell you something. You could be doing it without the Lord. You get. You can be. Uh, you know, there's guys who who uh, didn't 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 unbelieve. Jonah didn't unbelieve. You know, and yet he was backslidden. Uh, Elijah was still. You know, he was still uh, a prophet. Uh, he was still a, a guy who had just conquered 400 prophets and stuff. And, and you know what? There he was underneath a juniper tree afraid of a woman. And uh, and he was backslidden. And he had fasted even. He found himself in a cave and complaining. You have to understand, God's working with broken vessels. You are a broken vessel and God is working with... That's the greatest miracle. The, except for the... As far as getting saved, the new birth is the greatest miracle on the planet. But that is a greater miracle than somebody touching somebody and healing them. Why? Because you can heal somebody and they can go to hell. If you could, they could, hey, they go to hell. They ain't saved, they go to hell. You can go out and give all the food you want to everybody and, 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 and give everything you have away and, and, and whole, make a whole town happy. And that town would still go to hell. Because they're not sinned without Jesus Christ. They are without hope. They are without hope. You know, people fight about, uh, you know, there has to be another way. If God made there 100 ways to be saved, He made 1,000 ways to be saved, there'd be some dope sitting, in, sitting around wondering and mad and bitter that there's not a thousand and one. Instead of being grateful that there's one way and God showed you the one way and it's very simple. Trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Something else. So anyway, uh, Moses starts to talk about making a request here. Now, uh, God knows the people are stiff-necked, and they, He says, "You know, you need to be you need to be sanctified." And they set up a tabernacle of the congregation. It's not the same tabernacle. They don't rear up the tabernacle until later on in uh, Exodus chapter forty. Is the first time they rear it up. It, the stuff hasn't even been made yet, and um, and that that's made for you know. I, I need some personal time now. And Moses goes out there and gets some personal time. He goes in, and the people watch him. But you'll notice it doesn't say like all the people went in there. You know, and God came in a cloudy pillar. It says in verse number nine, He sent and stood at the door 
of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And that's something. And we notice that there's three things about the cloudy pillar. Uh, the cloudy pillar is a, a, a thing of divine guidance in, uh, in Exodus chapter 13. In Exodus 14, it was divine protection. It protected them when they were uh, when Pharaoh was chasing them. And then, of course, it was uh, here uh, in this part, it's mentioned again, and there it is, divine communion. Communion, communication, uh, communion to get together, to commune, community, okay? A uh, big part is communication. Communion is communication, okay? And, uh, and in verse number 11, back at 33, he said, in, in 33, he says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, how? Face to face. Face to face, uh, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Uh, you don't get those things today. You, you know, God doesn't speak audibly to you face to face. How does he speak? He speaks through his word and through his book. If you're not reading his book, you're not talking to God. That's how you have to understand. You can say a lot of things, but you're not going to hear from him unless you're in that book. You're not getting signs. You're not getting visions. You're not getting that stuff. There are people who say that stuff are lying to you. Um, and of course, uh, Joshua did not depart from the uh, tabernacle, and he's a picture of Jesus Christ because he, uh, Jesus, always has fellowship with the Father, always. And um, so, in verse number twelve, uh, the Lord makes sure you understand that the the the, the Lord is uh, the Lord is, uh, is 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 good ground to be standing on. Okay, and Moses starts to talk about it, and what he says is in verse 13, really what he wants is he wants more grace. I want more grace. And, um, and he wants more grace for the people. Okay, a, a grace for grace thing. And he also, what else does he want? He wants a, he wants a revival. Okay, he wants a revival. And he's going to start to talk about uh, something here. It, he says to him, he says in verse number 17, and we'll read all the way down, and then we'll talk about these things. I'll teach you some things. Uh, I want you to understand something. What I'm going to teach you tonight is a big piece of meat. You can either believe it or not. It's a big piece of meat. Okay? Most people won't even get this. Bible says in verse number 17, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me, the Moses as he says, show me thy glory. That's his request. Show me thy glory. And he, and he said, I will, uh, I will make all. How much? How much? All. All. My goodness pass before thee. That's the I think that is the key of this whole teaching right here. All my goodness. Remember that. Not half of it. Not a good feeling. He says, All my goodness. It's going to mean something. And he says, and I will proclaim. There's going to be a proclamation here. The name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. And there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place. <laughs> Behold, there, there is a place by me. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts. But my face shall not be seen. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for this word. 
We thank you, Lord, for the teaching. We love you, Lord, and bless it tonight, Lord God. Give us a, a good time in learning. Lord Father, let it get to our hearts, Lord God. Let us uh, be very, um, let's, let us be very, let's walk, let us walk circumspect through the scriptures, Lord. We love you, in Jesus' name. Amen. So in, in 17. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. <clears throat> no. He's in the tabernacle. It's the tent they put out because the tabernacle wasn't made yet, right? So it's like, yeah, he's in the tent of tabernacle of congregation. Yeah. It's a lot now? He's in, they called it the tabernacle of congregation. It's not the same tabernacle. tabernacle. No, I, I realize it's not the same tabernacle, but it, it's a tent though, right? That they've got yeah. to sit up. Yes. Some kind of a tent. Yes. So he's there now with the Lord at the tent. Uh, he walked out, remember? Jo Joshua was still there. He, he left. It says... Um, <laughs> And he turned, verse number 11, he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, the young man, departed not out of the Torah of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, see, see, thou, uh, see, thou, see thou sayest unto me. Bring up this people. So, um, but you're going to find out where Moses is right now. I'm just trying to visualize this. That's okay. Uh, he left. Moses is most likely, uh, he's, uh, he's, going to be communing with the Lord uh, it's either by himself or with Joshua we don't know uh, but he wrote the book he's giving the testimony of these things most likely he uh, in the mouth of two or three witnesses the truth is established I would assume uh, Joshua's involved I would assume Joshua's involved hard to give a story without somebody uh, knowing also what it is to give because uh, uh, God said in Deuteronomy we go past what he says that two or two or more. Okay, uh, but anyway, let's go on because he says he says in verse seventeen, he says, um, and the Lord said unto Moses, I, I will do this thing, I will do this thing also, that thou hast spoken. Okay, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee. Uh, by name. And, and there's something to say about that. I know thee by name. Uh, let's go over to John chapter 10 on that part. John chapter 10, the Gospel of John. The most, uh, we're, we're very familiar with this part of the passage too. Uh, And you'll notice that in the beginning of the chapter, he says, verily, verily. There's a verily, verily. Truthfully, truthfully. Uh, there, you know, truthfully, truthfully is only in John. Verily, verily is only in the book of John. And he does it, I forget, maybe five to seven times. I forget the whole time uh, how many times he does it. But um, he does it. It's a double witness of the truth. A double witness of the truth. Verily, verily. Uh, and, he's, and he's speaking on things. And he says in verse number three, he says, uh, to him the, port, the porter openeth the door, the guard of the door. He openeth. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep. How's he doing? By name. By name. By name. And leadeth them out. Okay? Are you a sheep? That's number one. He knows your name. He knows your name. Uh, it makes you think and realize that when he says, there was a certain rich man and Lazarus. I never knew the rich man, uh, God said. I know I don't know who the rich man is, but I sure know who that Lazarus is. Mm -hmm. So you know that Lazarus is a saved guy. Why? I know him by name. There are some people in the Bible that he turns around and says uh, about, he's, he comes to the tree, hey Nicodemus, come on. I mean, uh, hey uh, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. You think, uh, he goes, salvation has come to your house. Now, people don't realize something about that. He called his name out beforehand. Zacchaeus. Uh, when did Zacchaeus get saved? Probably on the way up on that tree. <laughs> I remember uh, a, a story a preacher told uh, uh, when I was younger, and he was talking about a guy, and a guy, uh, he gave an invitation, called uh, down if he wanted to get saved. Some guy came down, and he says, uh, are, are you saved? And the guy said, yes. He, uh, he goes, I'm saved. He goes, well, when did you get saved? He said, when I turned the corner back there. Most likely, you get saved when you take 
take the step and you've already trusted. It's not the prayer, it's your heart. You know? You want to lead somebody in prayer, that's fine, but it's it is the heart. It's just you know, you want to be uh, more assured maybe or something like that, but it's the heart. It's the heart of the person. Uh, being thoroughly convinced in their mind, they, get, they, they trust in the Lord, you see. From the mind, it goes to the heart. The heart is what counts. Amen. And uh, he says to him, he says, I know thee by name, Moses. I know thee by name. And, and he said, I, I beseech thee. Now look at that. He says, show me, show me thy glory. Oh Lord, I want to see your glory. Now, now look, I know that everybody in here, you've read the Bible long enough, and, and you would love to see that. Show me thy glory. What if I told you you already did? If you read the whole book, you saw his glory. If you've walked outside and, and walked around, you saw his glory. Okay? Um, God, the Lord has showed it to you, and that isn't the problem. The problem is you, you don't appreciate it. You take it for granted. Yeah. You take it for granted that that book was settled in heaven. He got it to you and he communicates with you. Uh, you know, uh, even even Christ, he said, uh, he said, man can, man, uh, they said uh, about the bread, and he says, uh, uh, a man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yeah. It's the perception of what you, what, what you call the priority. Okay? Uh, you won't go a day without food, but you sure will go a day without Bible. Where's your priority? Okay? Uh, show me thy glory. Well, you got it in your hand. He has some device right there. That's if, if you were to look at that as a device, or if you were to look at that as a as as anything, look at it as something that is outside of the universe that you have in your hand. It can, God has to get it from outside the universe into your hand, those words. And was able to do it. Have you ever thought of the trail of blood that brought it? The men who died bringing about that. Hey, look, nobody died for the NIV. Nobody died for the NASV. Nobody died for the New King James, the NLT, or all the other mess. Nobody died for those books. They had committees and businessmen and the Dewey Lockman Foundation and this foundation and that found the overview committees. When they were trying to put this book together, the people were trying to blow them up. When they were trying to do things with that, people just were killing people over that book. There's a trail of blood over that book. Not to mention the greatest amount of blood shed was the greatest was Jesus Christ. Show me thy glory. You got it right in your hand. But Moses makes the reply. He says, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make. Now look, he says, show me thy glory. But look what he says to him. I will make all my goodness. Now look, he said, I show me thy glory. But he says, now hold on. I'll show you my goodness. Okay? I will, show, I will make all my goodness pass. That's, look, that's not a, uh, if he said to you, I will make all my goodness pass before you. There's now a some type of physical thing he's going to see. Okay? He's going to see a physical thing pass before him. Now, right there, you start to think of God's going to pass, and he's got some kind of uh, sheet, and all the feathers fly, and we go back here, and the, the nice little uh, uh, robe he has in pieces, and it flaps in satin linen and goes by, and that's, how you thought this. And I know you thought that for years. Why? Because I thought that too. Just sounds like it should be there. But that's not what he said. He said, I'm going to make, I will make all my goodness, all of it, all my goodness, pass before thee. And then he says, I will proclaim my name, the name of the Lord before thee. So he's going to pro proclaim his name. So we're going to look at this goodness. Because you got to understand something. The Lord is good. Yes. <laughs> the Lord is good. Now I'm going to show you all my... He goes, I'm going to have all my goodness and it's going to pass before you. So let's go over to Psalm 33. Amen. 
Psalm 33. And uh, in Psalm 33, Psalm 33, it says uh, uh, in verse number, we'll just go from verse number one. It says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely uh, for the upright. <laughs> the upright praise God. Uh, praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with psaltery and with an instrument of Ten string. Everybody's going to sing unto him. Sing unto him a new song. Man, that saved people, isn't it? Play skillfully with a loud noise. Now here it comes. For the word of the Lord is what? It's right. The word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. Now look at verse number five. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. I will show you all my goodness. Well, there's part of it. The earth is full of it. So he's going to show Moses something that has to do with the earth because the earth is full with it. He's going to show him something that's full of the earth because there's something there. Keep your finger there. Okay? And go over to Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, the first chapter of the whole Bible, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was what? Bam! i got to show you all my goodness. I'm going to show you that light. And God divided the light from the darkness. And, and He goes down in verse number 6, and He he shows and he says, and God said, uh, let there be a firmament, that space. That He says, let there be a firmament amidst the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. God made a firmament, okay? Uh, and put it in the middle like a big old see-through beach ball type thing. And it says in uh, verse number 8, it says, and God uh, called the firmament what? Heaven. So that universe out there, it's called heaven. And the evening, the morning, and the second day. Okay? And look at verse number 9. It says, And God said, uh, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together and unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called, the, called he seas. Now look, and God saw that it was what? Good. So it's part of all that good, okay, that God's showing him. Look at verse number 12. He brings forth the herb yielding seed, the grass. And just so you know, the, the sun wasn't made yet. And he's bringing forth grass. That's how you know it's a 24-hour period. Grass would die without the sun. Amen. God makes sure you know it's a 24-hour period. Uh, those people who think, yes, it's, but you don't know how long the day was. Yeah, we know that grass can't live without in 24 hours without the sun, without light. Uh, so it says in verse number 12, And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree uh, yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was what? Good! See, on the third day, He said it was good. There's something good there. And... Uh, then God makes the uh, two great lights, the, the sun and the moon, okay, the greater at the day, to rule the day, the lesser at the night, verse number 16, that's the sun and the moon, they're not made till the fourth day, amen, that's what the Bible says, okay, and, uh, and it says in uh, verse number 18, it says, 
uh, and to rule over the day and, the, and, and over the night, to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was what? So get, guess what? We got that part right there. And then um, God says in, uh, uh, He says, bring forth creatures on the fifth day. Uh, new life starts on, the fifth, on that fifth day. And it says in uh, verse number 21, uh, it says, And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, uh, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was what? Good. Good. And that was the evening, the morning, uh, and that day. And, um, and then God, it says, let the, uh, verse number 24, it says, uh, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, the cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. It was so. God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was what? Good. God saw that it was good. Yeah, don't worry. I'm, I can keep with this. Okay? And uh, so so God now, he's going to create the likeness. Uh, it says, let us make man in our own image. Okay? Uh, the, and let the uh, let him have dominion over all these things. And God created man in his own image. Okay? Uh, and God blessed them, and, and he makes sure he shows all this stuff to them. Uh, and he says, and look down at verse number 31, it says, And God saw everything that he had made. That's everything that's there. What man, the, the creeping things, the herbs of the field, the fish, uh, he made everything. He shows them the, the sun, the moon, and everything. And he says in verse number uh, 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. Very good. Okay? So he's going to deal with Moses here going back to Exodus, but make sure your hand is right there in uh, Psalm 33. We're going to be dealing with Psalm 33 again. Okay? He shows him these things that are good and very good because they're part of the goodness. Okay, now go back to uh, Psalm 33. Verse number 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Okay. So... What do you think is going to be going on here? He's going to show him the creation. I'm Listen, Brother Remington, listen. This is what he just said. He said, I'm going to show you all my goodness, right? Now, we just went over some goodness. Okay, now, Moses is going to go, and he's, all this stuff is going to pass by him. Oh, yeah. He's going to get past. He's, look, he's going to stand there. And he's going to pass by him all his goodness. He didn't just say he's going to pass by. Look, this isn't this this isn't Charles Dickens and uh, that, that 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 Jacob Marley going by with the straps on him and stuff. This he says, I'm going to show you all my goodness, and it's going to pass by you. And he turns around, and what does he do? He shows him the creation. Who's the writer of Genesis? Moses. Well, guess what? He didn't have to get it by whisper down the lane. He's taking him back. So what do you got in the garden? What you got is you got Adam and Eve, and you got a guy watching. Seeing it all go by. Amen. Amen. The goodness of everything he made, right? Huh? Goodness is everything he made, right? Everything he made. All oh my goodness. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Why? He's going to give them all the stories. Yeah. How would he have known the little intricate things to write? God's showing him all these things. Hey, look, you got to understand something. What we're dealing with is time travel. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's time travel in the book. It happens. 
Revelation, brother, you gotta, I, got, I, got, I don't have the time. You're going to have to just keep with me. In Revelation chapter 1, uh, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, John says. Uh, John turns around. He's a, he gets whisked in immediately in chapter 4. He's in the Spirit. He's up in heaven. That's a future event over 2,000 years after he's done. And you say, well, that's a vision. But in chapter 10, it says that he took the book. What happened? He physically participated in the action. What's that mean? He's there. It's already there. John went into the future and John did it. Hey, look, I'll give you another one. Elijah. He's taken off the earth of the whirlwind, remember? He's taken up. Where'd he go? Well, he went into heaven. You're talking about the third heaven. Yeah, you had to go into the third heaven. Let me ask you something. Does any sin get into heaven? No. So how could he get in? And even in Colossians, right in Colossians it says that the law and the ordinances had to be taken out of the way so that we could get in. They were preventing us in the way. So where did Elijah go? He had to get on the other side of the court, cross to get into heaven. How did he? What would be the difference if he went right into time? He wouldn't even know it. Where does he end up? At the Mount of Transfiguration. Who's standing there with him? Moses. What happened to Moses? Moses, they dug up his body. Remember, they were talking. They were contending with his body in Jude. It says that Satan and them were contending with, and Michael the archangel, contending with the body of Moses. Hey, look, they weren't, they weren't digging up Moses to decorate him like some Christmas tree. They took the body. What did they use it for? You have to have a body to go into time. Why? The soul isn't affected by time. Where the worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. The worm dies not. It doesn't decay. And in Job, it says, uh, in Job, it says those, those men who were died, he said they were trodden out of time. The soul isn't affected. It doesn't decay. Absent from the body is to be... You go right there, Paul said. You're whisked right up. Time is not affecting it. But if you have a body, because the body is a physical thing, it is affected by time. There's a process of time in it. Moses had to go back. Why? He had to see this stuff to be able to write it. It's not whispered down the lane. How would he know these intricate details that he was writing? Oh, well, the inspired right? Look. God is a God. You gotta understand something about the Lord. He's smarter than we are. Amen. <laughs> He's incredibly smarter. He knew there were going to be men that were going to come up. Well, how would Moses explain that one? Well, you can explain it right there. It tells you, "I will have all my goodness pass before you." He's not talking about some ghost going by. <laughs> He's talking about my goodness. The the creation is going Amen. by. You, you, can you grasp that? There's one guy that goes back in time. Everybody else goes, went forward. I'm ready for heaven. Enoch. He was taken in, in, in Genesis. Where'd he go? Well, I don't know. He didn't go into heaven because guess what? He wasn't on the other side of the cross. And he's not one of the two witnesses. They meet on the... He, he's, where's he going? Maybe he's going to be in the rapture with us. You don't know. He's a picture of the rapture. But he went in time. I know that. And it, you've got to realize something. It's not something that's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where there's little molecules going across the air in that thing. You go from today to... They don't even know it. Elijah went into time. He's been. He's right there at the Mount of Transfiguration. Okay? Then what happens? Jesus talks to them. And what is he telling them about? What's going to happen? You ever think about him telling them what? What's going to happen in the book of Revelation? And they leave there, they go right into time, and they end up right there in the book of Revelation and just start witnessing about what Jesus told them at the Mount of Transfiguration? It would just be a blip to them. Well, I don't believe in time travel, then don't believe the Bible. I was setting you up a while ago by, by telling you this. I can see God allows us. He's, we're hedged in. We can see. Now look, I can see into the past. God allows it. I can remember things. 
I see things back in my old days, but I can't go back physically. Now watch. I can walk physically into the future I just did, but I can't see into the future. It's just the opposite. You're hedged in. But God was able to do it. Yes, he was. <laughs> and he shows it. There's points on Zechariah chapter 5. He said the guy got up on top of whatever that vehicle was, and he slammed the, the talent of lead down, the hatch down on it. The, it's participation, people. Somebody's there. Somebody's there. You have to understand these things. Well, I just, he's the, look. I'm going to show, I'm going to have all, look what it says. Go back to the passage. I will, that means it has to happen. The Word of God just said it. It's not a thought. I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And then what? And I will proclaim my name. I did this. I'm God and I am. I did this, he's saying. I will proclaim. He's given his, his I wills here. I will proclaim my na the name of the Lord before thee. By the word of God, these things, word of God, these things are created. I will proclaim my name. Amen. Yeah. You see how your mind just opens up now? Bam! Unbelievable. He says, um, I'm going to be gracious to whom I will be gracious. There's grace for grace. And I'll show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Uh, Moses is the only one standing there. And he's already telling him this. You have to understand, God can decide who He gives mercy to, and God can decide who He gives grace to. Yeah. Uh, we have a tendency to, why is that guy getting more than me? Well, he, he, stay out of God's business a little bit. Yeah. Would you like Him to, look, you got it, you're already saved. Wouldn't you like Him to give more mercy to somebody who's unsaved? No, I wouldn't. I would. Why? At least I know I'm not going to hell. That guy's sitting there going to hell. I want him to have more mercy. Yeah. Now watch, verse number 20. He says, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Uh, you're not, nobody, remember Jesus gets out there, he's telling them they're all wanting to know the Father. In the Old Testament, you have to understand something. When Jesus is in the garden, I mean, excuse me, he's in his prayer in 17, not in the garden, but he's in his prayer, he says, These that are thine are mine. He's talking to the Father. And mine are mine. I gave them over to the Father. Okay? In the Old Testament, it's the Father. The New Testament Son. Okay? So he says, you can't see mine. Now nobody's seen a Father. Hey, look. You got saved, and you're going up to heaven in Revelation chapter 4. And then you're coming, uh, then, then, then you're coming down here for a millennium, a thousand years. Yeah. Okay? And then after that great white throne, right? Yeah. Okay? You don't see you ain't seeing the Father even until right after that sometime. Maybe we don't even know. Maybe we're going to see him in the thirty-three thousand years or whatever that uh, that you know it talks about those thirty generations, thirty some generations. Because why? You haven't lived in perfection long enough to be able to go in front of the Father. Uh, go to Colossians chapter one. Some people can't appreciate knowing Jesus Christ. They always want to see something else. You got the best thing going. You got Jesus Christ. Yes. God says that's the best thing going. That name's the best name. Did you say in Colossians what? Uh, Colossians chapter 1. Okay. Colossians chapter 1, verse number... Uh, okay, here it goes. Here it goes. Uh, verse number 15. Remember, he told him in 14, I pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God where in, G in Christ Jesus. Verse number 15. Let us, therefore, as many as be, perf be perfect. You know, Paul just said there's some people that are perfect. As many as be perfect. What's, you can't be perfect. Paul said you can't. 
Every guy says you can. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Oh, I'm sorry. I must be in the wrong book. No, we're not. Uh, you're in the right book. I'm in the wrong book. <laughs> I'm thinking something else. Uh, 15. He says, um, now watch. He says in verse number, I'm excited. Who? Uh, verse number 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? Right? The firstborn of every creature. That's Jesus Christ, right? For by Him. That's who we know who He is. For by Him were all things created. That are in heaven, that are uh, that are in earth, visible or invisible, whether uh, they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. Okay. So, he, but he, he, he go now. Go over to First uh, Timothy chapter six. He's the image. Jesus Christ is the image. So what are we dealing with? 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse number 16. Verse number 15. Look at verse 15 first. He says, Which in his times, he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Now watch. Who only hath immortality dwelling in the light. Now watch. Which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Uh, you can't see God. In fact, if you... Look, Jesus Christ, is what you, that's God. But when He's talking about the full fullness of the Father, you can't see Him. And if you were to get in there, you would burn up like that. No flesh can get in there. You would burn up immediately. When they take the plenum out, the, uh, the firmament away, what happens to the whole universe? It burns. It just burns up. The heaven and earth that passed away. What did it say? The day of God. When the, the universe is, is melted with a fervent heat. What happens? He, he lets loose and the, the whole universe sees the, the Father's opened up. It's opened up. And, it's, and, and it just melts in His presence. No man had seen God at any time. No. Jesus make, make sure you understand that. No man had seen God. Amen. Go to Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. I'm going to show you all my goodness, he said to him. All my goodness. But we can't see my face. Moses wrote about all his goodness in here and you get to see it. You read about it. It's very detailed. It's very distinctive. Yes. You know what it is? We don't appreciate it. 23, look down at uh, verse number 8. He says, now watch. Behold. This is talking about the Lord. He says, he says behold, I go, I go forward. But he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him talking about the Lord. He says, on the left hand where he doth work, but I, I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job said, you can't, you don't know where he is. And there's too many people out there that say, I can see God. No, you, you can't see God. We don't even know Jesus Christ after the flesh anymore. We know Jesus Christ out of the book. Oh, right. Well, I come in the volume of the book that's written about me. When people come up to me, I've had people come in here, I saw a vision of Jesus. No, you didn't. You saw a vision of the angel of light. Amen. Because you don't know what he did. Look, your, your head said you can see the busyness, but if you're trying to say that you saw an angel or you got a vision or something like that, you didn't see God. You've seen some, you obviously may have seen the angel of light. You better run. Yeah. 
Amen. He says, you can't see my face back in Exodus chapter 20. You can't. He says, and he said, thou canst not see my face. Why? For there shall no man see me and live. No man's... Remember how many times in the Bible they said, we saw God, we're going to die. They understood, but they were seeing the angel of the Lord when he manifested himself to them without blood. And uh, they got to see that. And, 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 and they, but they were afraid. They understood that. We see God, we're going to die. That's why he, had, he told them, put a sacrifice out there. So, verse number 21. And the Lord said, Behold, and the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. You notice how there's a place by me. He, he doesn't turn around. You, you, be, you better get close. <laughs> there's a place by me. What's that? It's, you better get real close. That, there's the difference is people, i got a fear of the Lord. I don't want to get near him. And God, there's God turning around saying what? There's a place by me. You better get close to me. You better be fearing not being close to me. Okay? And he says, there, there's a place by me. Oh, what is it, Lord? And he says, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. I, I want a rock. Well, here's your, hey, hey, you want to you get to God? Someday I'm going to see God. Amen. I'm going to see God. Jesus is God. But I'm going to see God, and guess what? I'll be standing on, upon the rock. You know what the other portion of that is? A cleft or a cliff is a split. It's a split and an open split, okay? Uh, you remember in John chapter 19, uh, Jesus turns around and the, the, the Roman soldier comes over and he stands on the one side of Jesus and he does what? He thrusts into his side and makes a split. He says here, he says, there's a place, and guess what? It's um, it's by me. And thou can stand upon a rock. And he's going to make that cleft, he says, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass while my glory passeth by. So his glory is passing by. That I will put thee in the cleft of the rock. While he's passing this by. Now listen, he's putting the glory is already, he says, as the glory is passing by. As he's showing him all these, he's putting them in the cleft of the rock. Okay, and Moses is going in there. He's going in there while that glory is passing by. All the goodness of God is going to be there. And Moses is going to be there too. Okay? I'm going to give you something afterwards that's going to just make you think. And this is just a theory. This is just a theory. Okay? Just a theory. It says, It shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by. And I will take away my hand. Now watch what he says. Thou shalt see my what? Back parts. What back parts? Way back there. I'm going to get you, but you're going to see everything that happened back there. Why? You're going to have to write about it. I want you to have a first-hand experience, Moses. I mean, think about it. If it was whispered down the lane, it would be it would be tough. You say, yeah, but I understand God, God can do everything. Yeah, but God makes sure everything's done in detail. Very, very detailed. And, and, he, and Moses would be thinking, he's writing it. But now it's a whole different ball game. You got Moses sitting there actually writing what he's seeing. Boy, does that make sense? Yeah, it's called God sense. Any other way could be nonsense. So he's going to show him his. Go to Numbers chapter uh, twelve. He actually tells him, watch this. Now, they're getting, he gets into a, there's a fight here between Moses and Aaron, okay? But what, and God says, I know Moses the prophet, right? He makes sure they know that. My, 
Verse number 7. He says, My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. He says, Moses is the best guy in all mine house. Now watch. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently. And not in dark speeches. He's not going to do it in parables. He says what? And the similitude of the Lord shall he what? Behold. He saw the similitude of the Lord. He said, behold it. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Moses is up there writing a book. He's writing Genesis. He's writing the book of the law. That's one of the books of the law is Genesis. And there's Moses writing it. Why? Because he saw his back parts and he saw God. He got to see the stuff. He got, got to see God's goodness back there. Okay, so he starts to see it all as it's happening right in front of him. He's back there. Uh, I'm going to give you something. You don't think you're going to see it someday? You're in Christ. He's going to show you all this stuff that it happened. It's going to make a difference. Why? Go to Job 38. Job 38. Just go forward. Job 38. We've got a little bit of time. Tonight is train filled the temple again. Huh? I've been talking to the wait a long time. Tonight is train filled the temple. I told you, this is a pretty big piece of meat to find out. Oh, isn't it? amen. Wait a second here. I'm going to have all my goodness passed before you. What's his goodness making on the earth? Amen. Creation. It's all there. Uh, the, the stories, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and everything that had happened, he's going to see. He write, gets to write all this stuff down. Amen. That's all this stuff is coming up here. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Go to uh, Job 38, and I want to show you this. Now, this is me. I just, I think this. I think you're going to see it someday. And watch what happens. He says, he says, then the Lord answered, Job uh, out of a whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Killer question, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath, you know he told Job the answer? That was the command answer, Job. Job can't answer these questions. You know your humbleness now. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? And who stretched the line upon it? He's talking, he's talking in time right now, back when he created it, and he's putting it, putting it together in a process. God is having a process here. And then he says, whereupon are the foundations fastened? Well, it's crystalline inside. We don't see it. You can't even see it. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Who's the cornerstone? You take that word, you're going to see that's Christ. Where was he laid when man sinned? So he walked with him through time to the part of Genesis chapter 3. Right there is Genesis chapter 3. He's talking about a cornerstone. Now watch, it says, when the morning stars, they're, they're angels, right? Sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Well, i got to tell you something. Here's what I think. Number one, Adam's a son of God and he's standing there. Eve's a son of God and she's there. Moses is now a son of God. He's there too. And if you, God lets you see it, guess what? You go back there. You'll be there too. All the sons of God shouted for joy. Why? Because he didn't destroy man like he did those angels. When they sinned, he died. That's it. He destroyed everything. And, re, and, and to do over, he had to destroy what they had. But not these. Why? They shouted for joy. Why? Because God found a way. That's why he made man. He can't save angels. They were born eternal. Can't save them. Man was born limited. And he has a soul and he's born again. Catching up on that? I'm going to show you my back parts. Can I ask you something? Okay, real fast. When the morning stars sang, so that's referring to the angels. Yes. Okay. Because Jesus is the bright morning right. star. 
Right. It's not Satan, don't worry. That's only in the NIV. <laughs> Amen. Um, so what we're looking at here is there's one man that we know went back in time, and that's Moses. And he showed him his back parts. He shows him straight up. Why? Because he needs a first hand, he needs a first to write that book of Genesis, the way he wrote it with all that detail, he had to be there. There's no way he yeah. couldn't have been there. Just to hear uh, Jacob's wife turn around and say the name Benoni, and he said, he says, no, it's Benjamin. These are things that wouldn't it would just be walked by if they were men, the details. They just walk right by. Who would find out that terror was an idolater? Unless somebody knew some intricate things here. And guess who that is? That's Moses. And Joshua most likely too. There's a possibility Joshua was there too seeing the same stuff. Why? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. Yeah. And he's had Joshua with him back there making the tabernacle, uh, seeing the patterns of the whole universe in the tabernacle and being the embodiment of Jesus Christ, the tabernacle. And, uh, and he shows Joshua with him. And Joshua went to the tabernacle also, the tabernacle of the congregation, to commune with the Lord through the cloudy pillar, and he stayed in there. And now Moses goes up. You don't think Joshua was there with him? Amen. I, I think Joshua wanting to have communion with God, Joshua would fight to get there. Look, the only reason that John, Peter, James, and John were the ones that were separated is because they kept coming. They were hungry. The closer you get to God, the more of God He will reveal to you. Amen. That's the way the book runs. The closer the person is to the Lord, the more revealing it. God reveals more and more to you as you get closer. Okay? I want to show you my back parts. Okay, get the cleft of the rock, and I'm going to go take you back there, and I'm going to show you my goodness, the earth, and everything. The whole uh, kit and caboodle is going to pass before you. What are you going to do, Moses? Well, there's some paper there. Bring it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a photographic memory. I would assume he's intelligent, very intelligent, probably because the blood isn't as tainted as it is today. Moses probably got a lot of intelligence. Um, compared to, considering that he was able to lead 2,000, maybe three, 2 million or 3 million people and uh, do it successfully for four, in four years. Yeah, he had his problems. But people, four, all those people... And they're bigger when they, you know, at the end, they're having all these kids. This guy's a genius. This guy's a genius. We, we, we downplay these guys because we think because they don't have technology. They're advancing faster and faster than we could ever imagine. And their minds are definitely... Adam named 70,000 kinds. You could not... You can't even... You, if I gave you 10 kids at one time, you'd be there all day. <laughs> trying to figure out their names. Moses was able to, I mean, uh, excuse me, Adam was sitting there naming 70,000 70, kind. The man, was in, the man was incredibly intelligent. You know? The blood, the blood isn't tainted like it is today. We've tainted the blood. We, we, we're like a total, an en, total entropy. We're not, living as, we're not living as long. We're living sicker longer. That's all we are with chemicals. But we're not living longer. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yeah, go live as long as Moses. Amen. <laughs> go live as long as Noah. Yeah, I got so bad it was down to, like, the strength of 80 years. Yeah. We're lucky to make 70, he says. So, you know, yeah, 70. That was during uh, <clears throat> um, David's time. Yeah, David. Uh, how long did David live? 70 or 60? 70. 70. 70. 70. No, he no, lived. No, he lived longer than that. He lived? It was uh, Solomon no. that started the, the, the Yeah, he lived, so, he said it was strength 80 years until... That's what it was. It was over 70. Yeah. All right. Well, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Uh, Lord, a big piece of meat went out tonight, Lord God, an eye opener. Lord Father, I don't know. I, mean, it, it, I don't know about that part. You read right, wrong. It's good stuff, though, Lord. And, uh, uh, you know, to show all thy goodness in front of us, Lord Father. And we thank you that we have all thy goodness is in this book, Lord Father. Thank you for this book. Thank you for the men brought forth and you used to bring forth this book. Thank you for a communication device to speak to you, Lord God. Let us be mindful of uh, and appreciate what you've done for us, Lord. 
and we love you. Thank you for our prayers, Lord Father, that uh, we ask you, Lord, uh, to see to our prayers, Lord Father. Break free families in, Lord God, that we can take no credit for, Lord Father. Uh, Lord God, bring Mary back. We, we want to we see uh, Mary Robinson back and, and bring Mary in too, Lord Father. Uh, uh, she's, she's got some problems for her health and stuff, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to, to help us, Lord, and love on us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, that was good. Amen. I don't know if anybody told you around 6 o'clock prayer meeting starts. Uh -huh. I don't know if anybody told you, but it's 6 o'clock on Wednesday night.